One of the questions that you might ask after that last demo is, how does IIS even know what to do with an ASP.NET Core application? All I did was point the IIS physical path to my published output, and somehow IIS just magically knows how to run my application. How does that work? Well, let's actually, again, move over into the published output, the Ode to Food directory, and I want to again call your attention to this web.config file that lives in this folder. If you've done any ASP.NET development in the past, you'll know that web.config used to be the configuration file for ASP.NET. In ASP.NET Core, we do not use web.config anymore, at least not by default. You could always plug in a custom configuration provider that looks for a file named web.config. But web.config as a default configuration source no longer exists in the world of ASP.NET Core. However, web.config is a configuration source for IIS. So when we point IIS to this folder, one of the first things IIS will do is look inside of web.config and ask the question, how am I configured? What should I do? Let's open up this web.config file and then let me bring this over onto the screen. And I just want to show you it's a very minimal configuration. But what this is telling the web server, which is IIS, is that I want to install a new handler that is something that handles incoming HTTP requests. And what I want you to do is give this handler the name ASP.NET Core, and I want you to take every request that comes in for any path to this website using any verb, git, put, post, delete, patch, head, anything. What I want you to do is take all those requests and forward them to the ASP.NET Core module. So that is the ASP.NET Core module that is installed by the hosting bundle for .NET Core. The ASP.NET Core module then knows that it needs to take that request and somehow get it to the middleware that is inside of my application. It's going to do that differently for out-of-process hosting versus in-process hosting, but ultimately it is the ASP.NET Core module that receives every request coming in to this IES server for this site and will make sure to deliver those requests to my application. So here's a bit of additional configuration for ASP.NET Core here in .NET Core 2.1. This is telling that module that the way to start my ASP.NET Core application is to run the ODEFOOD.exe program and give it the argument ODEFOOD.dll, which is my application. That's the assembly that contains my application logic. So we already know it's ODEFOOD.exe that works with a self-contained application. Otherwise, this could just be using the .NET CLI and say, just execute .NET ODEFOOD.dll and that will give you the process that you need to use to process these requests. So this is some of the magic that is happening behind the scenes with IIS in combination with ASP.NET Core, and it's how IIS knows what to do with my application. It's because of this little bit of configuration and the ASP.NET Core module. It also means that behind the scenes, IIS is essentially just running ODEFOOD.exe, or it's running .NET ODEFOOD.dll, and that means if you have any problems trying to get this deployment to work inside of IIS. One of the easiest things to do when you are sitting on the server, like I am right now, is just try to run odefoo.exe from the command line. There's a good chance you'll see the same error that IIS is seeing that you're trying to debug. Perhaps it's a configuration error, perhaps a configuration file is missing, perhaps the node underscore modules folder is missing like we saw earlier. That would have prevented this from working inside of IIS. But I can see here we are up and running. We're listening on a different port because we're using a different server now. But if the application works here, running from the command line, there is a good chance that it will also work from IIS. And just to be clear, what we're doing here when we run ODEFOO directly, we're using a web server that is built into ASP.NET Core known as Kestrel. Kestrel can sit here and listen for requests just like IIS does. Kestrel by default is going to be listening on port 5000 and 5001. Now you could use Kestrel and configure your firewall to allow remote requests to reach this particular server, but Microsoft still recommends that you do not use Kestrel in a production environment. They still want you to take your ASP.NET Core application and run it behind a production-ready, secure, hardened web server like IIS or Apache or Nginx. So I'm going to shut this down, but that's just a quick troubleshooting tip. And now that we have the application up and running, let's take the next step which is to get the application working with SQL Server.